individually we can have defining moments, families can have defining moments, and certainly characters, uh, if they are lifelike, will have moments that define them as well. Can you tell us why the movie Ordinary People was a defining moment in your life? I think when I saw Ordinary People, you know, I was about 17 years old, and it was the first really serious movie I had seen, you know, after Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. And um, it also really spoke to who I was as a kid. I was uh, kind of a socially awkward, lonely kid. And so I felt, you know, whatever discomfort went with with that. And ordinary people showed this main character who looked on the outside like he had everything together and like he didn't experience the kind of pain that I experienced. But then the film, because it's a beautifully told story, reveals his secret life. And in his secret life, he's actually just come out of treatment after a suicide attempt. And he's going to high school, he's singing in the choir, he looks to everyone like he's one of the ones who's really got it all together. And for the first time, as I sat in the audience, I realized, oh, it's possible that what's on the surface isn't what's really going on um, underneath. That's, I guess, something adults know. I didn't know that as a 17-year-old. And so that film showed me that I wasn't the only one. So that was, that was the first thing that made a huge difference uh, to me. And then the second thing was I realized, oh, so the people around me might actually be in pain, even though it's not obvious. I need to treat people differently. And that is something that has continued to shape me you know, decades later. I look at people differently because of what that film taught me about other human beings. And then the third thing for me, was I saw for the first time what a movie could be. And so I thought, this is what I want to do. I want to tell these kinds of stories that reveal characters and that move people, that provide meaningful emotion. So for me, seeing ordinary people became a dividing line in my own life on multiple levels. And so for me, that is a defining moment. And I assume you saw it in the theater? I did. I saw it in the theater. I own the DVD. It's still wrapped in cellophane because I can't bear to go back and watch it. I'm afraid it, it either is not as good as I remember or it will be... Uh, I don't know. I, I don't want it to disappoint me. And so I just keep it under wraps. Yeah, yeah, I, I can agree with doing so. It's almost like in, it's frozen in time. There's something special there. That's exactly right. Yeah. And I don't want to disturb that memory because that memory is vivid and is kind of a bedrock of the person I've become. And how were other people leaving the theater after watching that film? I think other people were powerfully moved by it. Uh, Mary Tyler Moore delivers a fantastic performance as the sort of cold-hearted mother who is, uh, the whole time she's on screen, you fear she's driving her son to suicide. And I remember wanting to like take my shoe off in the theater and show it at the, throw it at the screen when she was on screen, which is, you know, what a testament to to that performance. Uh, so I think, you know, other people were really moved. I'm not sure how many people uh, would point back to that experience as a defining moment in their lives. It's one of the things about film, I think, that is uh, fascinating to me, that we all have different responses to it that are partly shaped by the film itself, but partly shaped by us and uh, what we bring to the film. Who are the characters in Ordinary People? So you've got the dad uh, played by Donald Sutherland, uh, the mom played by Mary Tyler Moore, and then this 17 year old son. And then there's, a, there's another brother who's really absent from the movie because he 
drowned um, before the events of the movie, that was a defining moment for that family. And each one of these uh, characters responds in a different way. Uh, Mary Tyler Moore's mother character kind of makes it clear to her surviving son that she wishes that the other brother had survived. And that becomes the seed of his misery, uh, is that sense of being rejected uh, by his mother. And his dad is trying to figure out how to put his family back together after the tragic loss of the one son and the just the terrible chemistry that's going on between mother and the surviving son played by Timothy Hutton. Um, and it, they're all doing the best they can, but it, it, it feels so real. Uh, at least to me, sitting in the theater, it felt like this is a real family. I didn't feel like I was watching a movie. And, uh, and I think that that's also informed even the way that I approach writing uh, as a screenwriter. That's the tone I go for. I love naturalism. Um, I don't write big, bombastic uh, comic book kinds of material because that's not what speaks to me. It is that sense of I've gotten lost in a dream and uh, this feels in some ways more real than reality because uh, a great film reveals more of the characters than sometimes I'm able to discover of the people that I actually know. And I find I really crave understanding who's really there. And so a film that shows that to me, I really love. And I, uh, I strive to do that as a storyteller as well, to really peel back the layers and reveal who the characters are that we're dealing with. I'm just curious, when did you purchase the uh, DVD to Ordinary People? Um, probably bought that something like 10 years ago. You know, I think I just came across it uh, on a shelf somewhere. And um, when I first had that thing in my hands, I thought, well, I should, I should watch this. And that I just kind of felt resistance uh, in myself to that. And so then it ended up on my shelf of DVDs. And now it's even hard to find a DVD player in the house if I wanted to watch it. Can you give us a general explanation of what a defining moment is? Kathy, who's my co-author and my wife, and I first encountered the idea of defining moments through a mentor of ours, a television writer-producer named Coleman Luck. And he was mentoring us through a rewrite of a feature film uh, that we, we had written early in our careers uh, called After the Truth. And um, Coleman made us work uh, really, really hard. He told us we would come to hate him. Uh, and I thought that that was hyperbole, uh, but he was right. He, he pushed us so hard. Um, we didn't come to hate him. We have a tremendous respect for him. Uh, but I remember foolishly asking him at one point, do other writers really work this hard? And I've come to find out, yes, they do. The good ones do. But he, he had this idea that he shared with us, and it, the idea was all of us have a handful of experiences that have profoundly shaped us. So we live through lots of moments every day in our lives, but not every moment is equal in terms of its impact on shaping us. And Coleman believed that there were about maybe a half dozen moments that each one of us could point to that account for much of the person that we are today. And his idea was that the same would be true of characters. And if we wanted to deeply understand our characters, what drives them, um, how that broken character got broken, or how that broken character eventually heals, that we would locate that half dozen or so moments that have defined those characters 
and that that would actually be more valuable than understanding how much change is in the character's pocket or you know so many of the infinite number of details that we could know about about a character uh, Coleman's thought was it is these moments that define the character that tell you more than anything else you could possibly know and um, so Kathy and I began doing that work with our characters looking into their pasts to discover the moments that had shaped them and then looking into the time of the story the time that's actually unfolding in a movie or television episode and saying what are the the moments that happen live in front of our eyes that not only have formed a character but now in in real time before us transform the character into who they're becoming so um, for us what we discovered uh, about defining moments that helps us to locate them is they always tend to create this boundary between before and after we talk about the time before the house burned down and the time after the house burned down all of us on this planet will talk about the time before the pandemic and please god the time after the pandemic at some point um, so the planet can have a defining moment uh, individually we can have defining moments families can have defining moments and certainly characters uh, if they are lifelike will have moments that define them as well how many defining moments are there in ordinary people boy you know in ordinary people because it's been so many decades since i saw the film that i can just say off the top of my head there was the moment of the drowning so when the oldest brother dies tragically that is a moment that defines the whole family and then also and so that happens before the movie begins and then another defining event is when Timothy Hutton's character attempts suicide and that creates another before and after moment for purposes of the film the impact of that attempted suicide is that we as the audience as soon as we know about that are on the edge of our seats because we fear that he's going to complete the act uh, that he's going to take his life and we like this kid and we view that uh, that would be tragic and so we are rooting for that not to happen we are infuriated by his mother's coldness to him uh, every time he tries to connect with her she pushes him away and we just want to scream at her don't you see what's happening don't you see how much he needs you can't you put your arms around your son all of that is rooted in that defining moment of the suicide attempt which is made known to the audience so that we we get the good out of it we get the emotional juice that flows from that and then there's a defining moment of a kind of connection if I am remembering the movie correctly that happens between Timothy, Timothy Hutton and his dad Donald Sutherland that makes you believe that maybe they're going to make it and so it creates this other turning point a kind of a kind of provisional healing there may be more in there those are the three that that remain in my memory uh, so it's a film of a lot of pain and and grief but it's also a hopeful film uh, but it's bittersweet because the mom's character doesn't get to participate in that reconciliation and again if I go back and ever crack open that DVD I may find out I'm, I'm remembering wrong but in my memory those are the three key defining moments that uh, immediately come to my mind